Here we go. Time for day two. Let's see if this is running. No. <laughs> I wish there was a better way to to do these live stream starts. I mean, they kind of force you to check to make sure your stuff's working. But that leads to people commenting on how they wonder if their stuff's working. Okay. Um, I don't have a ton of time tonight. i um, super busy. Um, but um, here we are. And we are... I, I think I got these out of order. I don't know. I can't remember what I did when on the visit. It was... We started, and I went, and I think we came back and for I don't, I really don't know. I um, might have taken multiple full rides. You know, it just anyway. Here we can just see uh, the last time I had the uh, the photo that was sh it showed off the uh, the um, starting signal from their uh, what they call this the, what they call the Sprog station. Uh, by the way, again for anyone who weren't wasn't here yesterday, this is um, part two of the photo set of the uh, uh, Seashore Trolley Museum in Brantford, Connecticut. Also known as the brand is Branford or the Branford Electric Railway Association. Uh, they, in theory, should be New York City's destination. It should be the destination for New York City streetcars and subway cars. Although I just um, they mainly collect seems to be sort of stuff from all over. With more things going to shoreline up in Maine. Go figure. Anyway, I'm not a huge trolley person. I will make comments that I can. This was a nice two day thing. Taken um, July 2005. Okay. All right. Uh, anyway, last time we we uh, we left off with uh, the the si the starting signal and the the bridge over the marsh. This time it's going to be sort of the opposite. Um, and like I said, this is how the public sort of gets to the museum. There is a, a land way, but it's actually quite quite a bit quite a bit of a, a hike. You have to sort of go all the way up to the inside. So. The uh, the old this is an old an urban line that would actually connect East East Haven with the what they call a short beach or something. So um, it did and still does have the uh, the most convenient uh, way to get there. Uh, and again, the uh, this signal is just because it's a it's a single track and they want to make sure as they uh, as they start as they start uh, uh, the trolleys start heading out. You know, they're not going to hit a Mexican standoff. Here we have a. Uh, I think I went out on the the forty uh, something or other car, which is a. This is a Brooklyn. And you can see the advantage of a uh, convertible. This is a convertible car, which would have solid walls in the winter, um, as they like to say. This that was your air conditioning. Solid walls in the winter, open walls. Um, in the in the summer and shoulder seasons. Here we have the end of the uh, one of the loops. Uh, I was unable to determine if they do in fact have a a um, PCC car. It doesn't look like they do, um, but they, in theory, they have a loop, a double loop, like a circle that they can run around the uh, they can run around their shop complex, indicating that they could actually support single-ended vehicles. Baltimore Streetcar Museum is good. They got a loop at both ends, so they can easily support their uh, uh, their PCCs and other single-ended cars. Who boy. Going to rename that one, make it a little bit more descriptive of where exactly in the loop that is. And here, again, like I said, this 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 car did here, the 357, did look familiar from my recent. Uh, I've been processing some uh, Rock Hill trolley museums, and this was indeed a Johnstown, Pennsylvania car. Pitts uh, Rock Hill Trolley Museum, south of Mount Union, is the uh, the designated one for the Pittsburgh area, um, the Pittsburgh area trolleys. this just get the uh, uh, 
uh, here we go again. The forest straight away uh, looking eastbound this time. Let's chop off some of that blurry stuff down there. Yeah, resize. Well, actually, it's the uh, the 22 whatever signal, sort of reverse. So maybe I'll just use that. I should probably identify the signal photos explicitly. Makes it a little less confusing. So you can get to the, all of them at one, at one go. I'm not sure what signal this is. Uh, just looks like the auto signal. Um, the curve, yeah. So this is just—it's very—it's a very nice run. Um, the seashore, the museum in Maine has a fairly long one. It's good for speed, but you just don't get the—you uh, don't—you definitely do not get uh, the the scenery uh, like you do because that's that's just in the middle of a pine forest. I took a lot of these notes going the opposite direction, so I just have to use the same names and switch westbound to eastbound. That's how that goes. Let's see, do I got anybody watching? Oh, I got a lot of people. Hello, all the people who noticed and have shown up to watch. If you notice, if you look here in this uh, view of the, the forest curve, um, let me just expand this a little bit. You can see that they actually have some girder rail on the inside there uh, that would grab the flange and help move it around. Generally, trains don't, uh, safety rails and stuff like that aren't necessary, but on very sharp curves, um, that you start needing it. We have the S curve. Looks like there's a little uh, little bridge there. Again, this is a very very nice line. Now I don't have like a midpoint passing siding like Rock Hill does, um, but I'm pretty sure that there was a uh, there was some sort of station there for uh, picnicking. We do a square aspect ratio on this one. Yeah, I never want to go, you definitely want to take multiple trips when you head out to these museums. Super fun, let's see. Um, yeah, I just, I just gave these generic names, which is back in 2005, which I'm going to definitely rectify right now. My, uh, my old digital camera, the one I was using through the end of 2006, only had a 3x zoom on it, so this is kind of an extreme zoom for the day.
Extreme! Yeah, uh, when I went to a tenant exhume, I thought that was, you know, the bee's knees, and uh, now it's, you know, you get like 30, what you know, whatever zoom you want, you can get. And this is, this is, you know, yeah, I know that I'm not using DLSRs for these. Um, I, you know, didn't really, couldn't really afford one back this early, but I still, I still enjoy having the option of what I call sort of a, a mid-range point, you know, a better point and shoot. Um, give you something you can, more portable, less r risk of, uh, less risk of getting it lost or damaged. Gotta make sure that I'm indicating that these are eastbound, not westbound. Oh, the bridge. Did I did I give the any of these names? No, not at all. Not at all. Um what I should do is I should find out try to find out the name of that area. That's it. See, there's that little bridge that it goes across. Train. Yeah, no one's gonna get me a. Uh, no one's gonna get me a uh, name on it. If you notice, in the salt marsh, all those ditches, those are mosquito control ditches. They uh, help draw water out. Um, nothing you do today with. Uh, today's wetland regulations, but that was done back in the day to relieve the standing water. It wasn't quite draining the swamp, but it was, uh, it would definitely help, uh, flush out the, uh, the mosquitoes. That's the end of uh, set one there. Only have 46 photos to do, which is two less than the normal complement for a day. Let's see what we got going on. Say hi to people in the stream. Thanks for, thanks for uh, hanging out. Uh, Gonna try to focus on this stuff. Gosh, taking a lot of salt marsh pictures. Huh. Don't remember taking all these. Did I actually give them names? Yeah, you can, you see a lot of this as you you take you take Amtrak to Boston, you get a lot of these sorts of views, even from the Northeast Corridor. The uh, on the shoreline. Now this doesn't empty out into the ocean; it op opens out into Long Island Sound, which is kind of a distinction without a difference. But uh, there you go. Here we have a nesting box there. I feel like I've... So one of the things they also mentioned was uh, um, that what's now today, a, it, was, it looks like a, just a you know, pristine you know, salt marsh with a little bird nesting box there. This used to be uh, trolleys would make, would make additional income. Um, by... by um, uh, running ash and other stuff, mainly ash. Uh, a lot of the waste disposal back in the day was simply you burn it and then you're down to ash and you can usually burn stuff in incinerators or just to get rid of the whatever. And then the trolley lines overnight would run it out to wherever they could and dump it. A lot of the times um, this was used to fill areas in a city would you'd fill you'd, you'd, you'd dump a bunch of ash to to make more developable, you know, to fill in a marsh to build a more part of the city, more more development, and a lot most of the time that ash was run by the streetcars. Um, they would have little uh, steeple cabs or other type of uh, little freight engines, uh, and they would run that and they would run that at night. 
here we have the uh, the South South Beach Station or South yeah South uh, Short Beach Station. Not sure what I'm going to do here. Yeah, I'll probably sharpen it up. Leave it sharpened. Uh, 4573 at the Short Beach Station. Remember, to, for, for those of you who uh, who were not here yesterday, this was an old Brooklyn streetcar. The the ones that the uh, the Dodgers used, the Dodger baseball. You know, this is why Brooklynites were uh, given the name uh, Trolley Dodgers. This is one of the uh, the many uh, things that was in their area. But unlike a lot of stuff like the Baltimore Streetcar Museum or etc. etc. Um, um, this is not all all Brooklyn stuff all the time. So here's here's a thing back in the day. I had a bright picture or a little bit, and I just dumped it because you know I used to dump a lot more photos back then. Today I'll still I'll still dump photos if they're uh, if they're fatally compromised. But even even you know a, a different exposures of the same one can reveal uh, different things. Um, I think that's a cormorant. Uh, I can look that up. See, it's all, I always get sidetracked with, with animals. Well, whatever it is, it's definitely having some buoyancy issues. I think I've seen that before. Maybe I can find a list one that's in North America. Uh, well, either way, I try. Th it's that or something else. Um, but it's sort of sort of weird. There doesn't seem to be. I mean, I know this. It's not having trouble. It's it's supposed to look like that when they normally swim, but it's just kind of still still really really odd looking. I guess he's floating. Oh, taken off. I was wasn't too fond of the trolley going by, if I remember correctly. There we go. You know, I want to make sure I got a little bit of the shoreline in there. Another marsh picture. That's looking north. Is it? Guess it would be. No, 
No, that's south. What was I thinking? Just gotta give it a different name. Oh my god. And you can see where it comes off the causeway and into the stuff. Boy, I mean, I hope that... And normally Long Island Sound is pretty sheltered from hurricanes and whatnot, but... Uh, um, uh, hopefully it won't get wiped out. This is very vulnerable for, you know, these museums don't have a lot of reserve, and if some sort of Hurricane Sandy type situation came in here and wiped out the track, uh, they wouldn't really be in for, there's not a ton they can do. So, cross your fingers. Oops. Get this, nope, too much. We have the open car again, number 11, a little soft this time. And this is car 2898 in the front. Probably something I should look up. Give me a second. Okay, this car was Toronto. Uh, spacious car from 1923, designed to speed loading and unloading. Used it during the sand. This is the one they. Uh, this is the one that they. This pipe, if it was designed to load sp uh, speed loading and unloading, it was probably a Peter Witt car with the center doors. And again, that whole thing was allowed a customer. It allowed like people to ec enter. And they would either pay when they exited, or they'd go to sit in the back, and then they'd pay this conductor who would sit, who was, the conductor was moved to this middle station. So you either pay the driver directly, um, or you could and stand like in the front zone, or you go sit, and you'd pay the conductor as you went to go seat. We have number 500. Oops. And number 500 is um, Pride of the Connecticut Company Fleet 500 built in 1904 as an open platform observation car. Uh, lengthen, it was later lengthened and enclosed. The car toured the entire Connecticut Company Street Railway System was also available for special events. Has a kitchen, bathroom, dining tables, and plush carpet. I should have gone in that one. Man, it's like the it was the uh, like the inspection car. It's pretty nice. But yeah, I need to get back there at some point. But it's one of those things. It, I'll do it eventually. But it's it's. I, uh, my uh, my my New York friend would probably do it with me. He's got a kid, so and it's sure that uh, I can probably arrange something. All right, next batch. Let's see what's going on. Oh, be good. Ah, oh, crap. Hold on. I forget what I did to fix this. Usually it just sort of goes. Alright, up oh, there it goes again. Alright, we're back. Sorry about that. How long? Uh, 
Ah, nuts. Sorry about that. Oh well. <laughs> We can have a bunch of non-railroad photos coming up here, so probably should have, that would have been the better time for this. Whoopsies. Um, hold on, let me just check. Uh, I'm clicking all over the place now. All right, let me just check that. Eh, wasn't that many minutes? Just a few. Uh, minus nine minutes. All right, sorry about that. Um. Anyway, uh, I got. I'm usually careful. It doesn't happen. It hasn't happened to me in a while. But yeah, it's sometimes I don't know what this is. It's like they're there. It's like they're. Look at that. It's got like the the, the the sheet metal on it. This is their um. This is their. Uh, it's not like the. It's like the like the Mad Max car or the one from the zombie film. Um, Day of the Dead. So. One thing I hadn't, I didn't mention yesterday was that there was, um, they pa they show it to you when you pass by, and I'll, I'll point it out on the thing. Um... I'm, I'm pointing out like the tour stop locations is when they when they give the tours they always they point out the five you know the tour guides point out the same five things over and over. Um, there was this thing that they point out where it's right back at the car barn, where as you came in, I thought I tagged it. Maybe it got deleted. Huh. Anyway, it was right in here where they have what they call the smallest farm in the state of Connecticut. I think it was that backyard right there. Um, and when in, in 2000 and whatever, it was it was had chickens and it had like crops. And well, anyway, the guy was able to claim an agricultural use for his property, which significantly lowered his uh, tax burden. I can't quite remember where the the smallest farm farm was, but it was somewhere somewhere down in there. That was one of the tour the items that they would uh, they would uh, mention on the tour. I just gotta get the the file names for this guy. Come on, where are you? This one was all the way back at the beginning, because I think these are the first photos I took, but they somehow got out of order. So. But this is the John, again, this is the Johnstown car. So this was, these are actually the first ones I took. But um, they might have been on a different "quote unquote" roll, as in smart media cards. So they might have gotten uh, dumped to the end somehow. I, I don't know, or maybe I did. These were the last ones that I took. There you go. So, if I was a trolley nut, I'd know all the pro the uh, the details, the horsepower, when it served, how it was preserved. The general thing that they say at trolley museums is that um, most a lot of some trolleys were intentionally preserved, but um, a lot of them were just got lost in the shops. They were used for like snow plows. They got like sold to a guy with a bat, you know, who wanted a chicken coop. And then sometime in the 70s, 80s, or whatever, after all the, the streetcars had been, other ones had been ground up, the preservationists would seek them out and find them. They'd emerge, and then they'd get restored and make their way, they'd, they'd find their way in a, um, in a museum.
Here we go. Here we just have the actual uh, the uh, the museum where you go in and you pay here and then you ride out to the other stuff. It's a, it's a, it's a nice way of doing the access control. Not that trolley museums have to worry too much about access control. Um. Oh, good. I need to find this stuff. Okay, so that's everything for uh, the streetcar museum. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be um, venturing off in to a brief outro of non-railroad photos. So I went to Wesleyan University in Connecticut, liberal arts school, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and they had um, back after I graduated, um, they had some. You know, this is this is back. You know, I'm not saying you know, it's 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 one of the, the 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 previous trends in higher education, where they were they were basically going to demolish in like a 19, 18 something, some, like a whole bunch of really old buildings, like from the 20s or before, to make use room for a new student center. And um, uh, was the you know, and I just wanted to try to get some pictures of the demolition going on. So it's not directly railroad related, but it's definitely preservation uh, related. I was not, I, I, I was a bit upset that they couldn't find a way to use a really nice. I mean, okay, so you don't want a gymnasium, but you could have at least made something out of it. Um, so. These aren't the greatest photos because I was sort of across the street, but you can sort of see that uh, that they've. It's it's interesting how the roof, you know, the the roof structure was able to stay up. You know that the the, the walls were not load bearing on this building that you could knock them all out and the uh, the whole structure would uh, stay up. In this case, I'm just going to number these sequentially so I can burn through them, but. Um, it was neat that how you know, everybody thinks of like you know it's it's easy you know I'll, I'll say as I was growing up, um, it was it was easy to uh, you know starting is able like oh you know the the, the Astrodome was a thing, and we've only had arenas arenas are a, you know a wonder of the modern world but um, uh, no you've had they've had field houses and arenas for quite some time, um, a lot of Victorian metalworking going into them um as you can see and you can you can you can, you know they aren't, they aren't crazy big but you could have you know constructing a a enclosed interior space has been an achievable feat since uh right out you know so at least after the civil war using either wrought iron or steel so like i said there, there's nothing of this anymore it just just really you know you got the you know good old riveted steel construction beams whatever it's it's so much more interesting than today a lot of today's mainly concrete cheapo whatever there's just so little because steel is so expensive compared to labor um you know you pay a whole bunch of uh, metal workers to to do your your erector set style erection <laughs> and uh you know it didn't you know it, it, but the whole point was to save on the uh, save on the steel because stuff was expensive it's a common theme in my uh, these my videos, but you know, like you couldn't have found an architectural firm to turn this space into a student center. You know, like a second, you couldn't put a second. You could have dropped the second floor in here under that skylight, cool, low, exposed steel ceilings. That's just a failure of imagination. It was a shame. But we're almost. Uh, I'm almost finished here. I probably lost everybody else because I'm not even doing trolleys anymore. But, you know, this is the stuff that was just on the end of the roll. So I'm just going to uh, churn through it real quick. And, uh, oh, yeah, I got one more thing. <laughs> I got I got a random M2 photo there. Something else that got demolished. Or at least I can't necessarily complain too much about the M2s because they did uh, last 40 years. The 4s and 6s, no. The 6s were barely 20 years old. Yet the FTA still gives them approval to... Uh, to uh, you know, demolish stuff. So, you know, if you buy a if you buy a, a vehicle, you should if it's a diesel, that's twenty years, and an electric should be thirty to forty. And uh, if you want to buy something, if you want to be like, well, we made the wrong, we we went with Bombardier, now it doesn't work anymore. You know, it's like, <laughs> oh, live with your mistake. Sorry. 
next time you want buy, you know, you'll find a, uh, you'll find a, uh, you'll find a um, uh, more established or uh, vendor with a better track record. This was the, uh, I don't know what was in this building. I think it was the, uh, the, the, this building I think was in the end of the steam, steam tunnel. So I think this was like the services building for the, uh, the gymnasium. Uh, where was I? Why do I have all these damn windows open? Close all that stuff out. Here we go again, just... Yeah, see, even the roof was recently, it was redone. I forget, some, I forget who, who gave him the bucks to, uh... Gave him the bucks to build the new building, but, uh... Remember the, uh, the, the, uh, the... Uh, the alumni gymnasium didn't necessarily have a specific name on it, so there was no family to uh, let the lawsuits fly. But I did the best I could to preserve some stuff. This was the uh, other building that got munched. Um... In this building, it actually was originally built as an asymmetric building. Um, and then they symmetrified it sometime again in the 20s. And it matched perfectly. But uh, this mainly held... The guy who gave... They got a lot of money for squash back in the day from some alumni who really liked squash. So the, the university had like... 20 squash courts and no one used them. And, and they're all in... Um, they were all in this um, North American standard squash as opposed to international squash. So it wasn't even that, like, even if someone wanted to use them, like, they they weren't the right dimensions. <laughs> oh, God. It was crazy. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't necessarily, um... Yeah, the, um, the squash, and the, the thing is that Okay, here's the overhead. There's the new student center that some rich guy gave money for. That demolished the old gym. There's the other building that was that is restored to its asymmetric appearance, but um, you know I like the whole thing. And the most useless part of it, the the whole squash building with like the rest of the courts, because there was like two courts over here and then a whole bunch more here. That's the thing that they left up. You know? Oh, okay. I think they turned it into a museum. I have no idea even what it's used for. Uh, I, I haven't been back to look around in that, um, but um, I gotta find where I have all the names from this stuff. So you know, don't demolish buildings that you can't reproduce because they were made with crafts that don't exist anymore. Ah, oh my god. It's like, do I, do I have to explain? You think this would be, would be easy to, you know, that this would not be difficult, a difficult concept. Just getting some, uh, using my limited zoom powers here to just grab some additional, additional stuff on the roof. Looks like I was trying to do a panorama here. I might have to go back and, uh, turn this into a panorama. Uh, my friend has the Photoshop that has the sort of photo stitch capability. Um, I will need to, I'm just going to save these out now, but I'm probably going to circle back to him and, uh, do a photo stitch on these. But we are almost done. Zapping through it. Say, so yeah, here's the services building. Um, right there. I think I popped that. Yeah, yeah, you're right. This was where like a boiler or something was, or a steam, uh, like a heat exchanger. Down that pit led to a, one of the accesses for the uh, campus steam tunnels. Uh, one of those things that um, I would occasionally get into back in the day. I'm not sure I used the fact of this building being open to go peruse the steam tunnels. This would be in July. There were no student there. I mean, 
regular students were not on campus. Uh, yeah, this is an M2. It's looking a little grungy there. That state of Connecticut symbol. Um, la one last railroad thing. For those of you who don't know, and a lot of people, or at least if you know me of Metro North and like to complain about Metro North, please be aware. Um, on the new, ha the new Haven line is almost completely run by the state of Connecticut. Um, the it's just, it's a contract. It's a for it's an as it's a contracted service. Um, anything the state of Connecticut wants, any any capital improvement, the state must ask for and pay for. Um, Metro North runs the service, does the track work, and submits a bill. Connecticut contributing two thirds to the cost of the deficit. New York one third. But just remember that anyone who says that it's the MTA or it's Metro North or it's not well managed, um, a lot of that it's it's the state of Connecticut. If they want to change, they can ask for it, and then Metro North says, "Okay, it will cost this much." And the state of Connecticut sits there and goes, "Like, I don't want to pay that much." And then the service stinks. I think it's gotten better, um, but back when it was like a butt of the butt of every joke. Um, it was not Metro North's fault, um, exactly to, uh, let me just double check, got all the photos. So anyway, I'm going to end on a railroad note there. Um, everybody have a great day. I will be back in two weeks, probably for a one nighter and then another two weeks for another one nighter. Uh, that's, um, uh, that's going to be July 13th and July 27th. Um, or the 12th and the 26th. I'm not sure exactly which night I'll be around. It'll probably be the 12th and the 26th of July if you guys want a heads up. Thanks so much for coming around. Hi, hey, Liberty, Kentucky. Thanks for watching. Sorry about the blackout. I, 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 I thought I fixed that problem or at least didn't haven't triggered it in a while. I just need to check back. I try to check back and forth. So anyway, thanks for coming in. Thanks for watching. And I will see you in uh, two uh, two weeks.